So I don't know if I've answered your questions, Rebecca. Somehow. We are still trying. We've not got to where we are going, but we keep trying. You see, a, a journey of a thousand miles, the Chinese say, starts with one step. But we added something in Nigeria to reach. You know what we added? You'd like to know? That a journey of 1,000 miles starts with a step, but we added it must be in the right direction. <laughs> um, I was, over the summer, I was reading a book called When a Crocodile Eats the Sun, and it's about Mugabe in Zimbabwe. And I was just wondering what if, if Nigeria had any opinion or policies towards his regime and with respect to the AU, if they had any policies towards it as well. You have had, you, I think Catherine, eh? Hmm? Catherine is your name? Kathleen. Catherine. I think this is interesting. You've reserved the most difficult for the last. You know, I want to answer this question, but it's a little bit difficult. You see, you have asked me a question about another head of state. If you have asked me a question about my head of state, I will have been able to speak because I know that it will either sack me or praise me. <laughs> but this one now, I don't know whether I will be posted to Zimbabwe as ambassador. But what I want to say is that Nigeria's stand has been very clear. We believe in dialogue. He who lives in glass house was not throw stones. You know, some uh, sociologists, ethnologists, specialists in uh, anthropology, believe that there are about 240 ethnic groups in Nigeria. But personally, as a linguist, I think we are not more than 22. Even for that, that's quiet. A number. We believe in dialogue. We believe in democracy. We have chosen it and we're following it. It's not the easiest way, but we have not found an alternative. Having lived under military regimes from 1966, when the first military coup occurred in Nigeria, I remember I was going to school that day and we had to turn back elementary school. And up to 1979, I don't know how many years, we have tasted that democracy is easy, it's easier. At least people can hear you. We can have our say. The rulers can still have their way, but we will have our say. I will, I will commend fellow Africans but in, in, in Zimbabwe, there's already dialogue. As you know, there's government of national uh, unity. Tsangarai is there in government. I think what they are doing now is to arrive and agree on who will be minister. You know, it's not easy sharing power. Power is not easy to share. One of my, one of my professors of power politics he told me that don't tell a politician, don't ask a politician, a politician to share power. Because power is what he spends all his life trying to acquire. And that he told me, he said, never you say no to an ambitious politician. Even when he tells you something like this, say, you say, Lawrence, you're my good friend. I know you've always stood by me. Uh, you know, just one more sacrifice for you, and I will make it. And when I make it, I won't forget you. But what you have to do is that you have to lose one leg, you sacrifice one eye, and I'll make it. I probably may need your heart and your soul, but I will win. If I win, I will not forget you. And probably, if you have to sacrifice being given a decent barrier, it's all in the struggle. Politicians are interesting people. I'm a diplomat. <laughs> I can think of no better way to end our evening together. Would you please join me in thanking Mr. Obishakan for sharing his wisdom and experience with us.